All right, so a special request, another um, quick walk through some uh, Foundry setup. This time it's Vaisin, one of my, definitely my favorite um, U0 engine game. It's really cool. Um, I'm just preparing to do a, a short scenario, so I've been setting this up recently. I haven't actually played with this yet, so uh, if there's something that you spot where I could do better, then please let me know, as always. So this is my start page. I've got the map here of the Mythic North. North. Um, as you can see, it's just a, a scene with a pretty large map, so it's a bit sluggish when you're scrolling, but there's also my mouse wheel. And then I've set up a few scenes here for the scenario. I also have, of course, set up Uppsala as for the um, base. So we've got that here, and I've put the creed of the society up here as well. I retyped that a bit because I like that better that way. So this map has got some weather over it. Um, I also put some um, notes on here, map pins, just basically for names, not for any other detail behind it. That can come later, um, but that keeps them from scrolling down, having to look at it, looking for the different things. Train station, I haven't actually in my setting got that yet because I started 1848. Um, but well, that's your mileage may vary on that. Um, next thing along would be just the scenes. I want to show you how that works as well in a minute, um, so you can see how, how long it takes to set up a scene. Um, but hopefully that will be quite clear. So anyway, scenes, I've got Uppsala and the Mythic North, and then I've got the the ones here for the scenario that I've been setting up. So I've got um, Fjallbacke Archipelago, which looks like this. And this is hosted on the server. Now, this is not my local instance. This is on the Forge VTT. So on here, I've just got the map. I put a little painting there that's just as a, as a mood setter. That is basically the same uh, that is from Fjallbacke. That was painted in Fjallbacke. I found that quite interesting. I put a little ship here so I can actually just take the um, the crew out and I can show what's going on, where we are later on, because there might be something where they have to interact with another ship. So already on the map, I just hit it so the players can't see it yet. There it is, the second ship. Um, I have another icon for that as well somewhere. But anyway, you get the, the mood for this here. Um, as you can tell, this is not a battle map. This is very much just a mood setter, just something to talk about, something to visualize it. And later on when I say, when I refer to locations to make them meaningful. Um, we've got Wrecker Island, which is uh, one of the key things. As much as I like the style of the maps, I sometimes think they need a bit more inst uh, illustration. So again, this is storytelling. This is not a battle map. I created a little picture here that's actually um, herring gutters at Wick on the Scottish coast. Um, down here, I can't remember, I think that might be Wick as well. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I don't want to go that far. It is a mood setter. And um, if you talk about the herring fleet at uh, Wrecker Isle, that's what I imagine it to be. Maybe the houses are a bit bigger than I would expect. But again, yeah, you tell a story, they won't even look at the houses that much. Um, the map of the inn, again, just for illustration, I don't see there's any sneaking going on or people staying much here. Or, so it's just, again, for scene setting. On the main map, I've set myself some map pins here. So if I, if I want to go somewhere, of course, I can go to the journal, but these are just journal notes. So I can hover over them quickly, remind myself what's going on, or you can double click on them and open the, the journal proper. Um, and you can see how I'm a bit obsessive like that. I basically put everything that I want to know in here. As much as I love the books, I like to just work off one screen if I can. Um, right, so that's that one. Characters. I have created some characters. Of course, I've got the characters that I need for the scenario up here. Um, hopefully that's all. And the artwork is great from, from uh, Free League as usual, so didn't have to do much. I used token tools to just tokenize them. So they all look the same. And as you can see on the map over here, I've pre-deployed them. So they're all hidden, but I've got all the actors here. So I just have to reveal them and then they're on the board and I can put them in the locations where they're currently hanging out. Um, that makes it a bit quicker than having to dig through the journal again. All right, what's next? Um, Vason, I so far only set one up. Um, but I'm just to briefly show, and hopefully this is not a spider for anybody who wants to play it is that you can actually create a list of conditions in the system here. So, yeah, so these are typical for VASIN. You have not just one, two, three conditions. They are actually very specific here. 
Um, and you can set that up. There's a sheet for this, which was created by the guy who made this um, system. Armor, magic, there's room for these. And again, if you want to, um, you can put notes into here as well. You can have the no notes and the secret notes just in the rule book. All right, don't want to show that too long in case there's anybody who uh, wants to play this rather than run this watching the stream. I have created the, the typical icon um, item libraries, so weapons I have got much in. I just put a few in and was playing with the icons, different items you could use. Basically, I just put the ones I needed so far. Talents, I put them all, all in, so for each uh, archetype I've got my three. And then I've got the general ones, the general ones from the rule book. There are a few more of those. That takes a little bit of copy and paste, a bit of typing, but um, for my players, I think it's worth it. So you then get this little picture here. It's this little text box. There's nothing special about it, but it gives you everything that you need. And of course, you can pick your own picture again for this if you like. Why this is useful, I'm going to show you hopefully in a minute when I look at making a character. All right. Um, almost the last one so i created uh, in the journals i create a few things here player documents this is basically where handouts go or with, where can they can have a shared note page or something like that with clues and hints that's completely for the players this one is not real yet uh, so if you look at configure permissions i said this is um, actually I'll give them none at this point they can't see that until i, I sent them the invitation for the advantage of course because we are starting a new session i've got a couple of returning players but probably three new ones from the first call of the day will be character creation um try to simplify this a little bit i previously made a, a google drive spreadsheet on this where you could click from one step to the other i'm hoping that they'll use this on the side as an overview yeah just talking them through the process and then uh, they can click on the first one and it's a D66. All right, I created a macro. Yeah, so if you roll on that, you should hopefully, there's the dice, uh, you get the results. Okay, that's 61. I call it as 1D6 times 10 plus 1 6. Thanks to um, Discord for pointing that out. And that then gives me all right, aristocrat, exactly what I wanted. And you can just click on the next step right here. Yeah, so that's the idea behind this one. Um, haven't fully connected this, but as you can see, after you get to 2D, there's no way to 3. I have to do that for each of the classes. I haven't done that yet. Um, right. So hopefully that clickable, clickable through. Um, I also created here on the side the the, what, the archetype pages. So that's with PD Foundry. I love it, by the way. So if you wanted to look at the priest and say, what was the priest about again? Then the, um, the players have that available to them. Um, I don't know why that's not loading right now. It's a bit sluggish, probably because of too many weather effects. Ah, there it comes. So you get the nice artwork, you get the description, you get the names, and you get the um, the key thing down here. Main attributes, talents, resources, equipment. That's what you, of course, need for the kind of creation. So they can refer to that, hopefully. Once loaded, if you make them cacheable yeah, in the setup, um, that'll be very big for them to refer back to it. Right, rules reference. I've created a few more things here as well. I, some, for example, I've just made a list here at some point. Import the melee weapons that's for me. Uh, another way of doing it is, of course, take a screenshot of whatever you're currently interested in and put it in as a picture like this. Yeah, so you've got the reference material, but of course, it's not data, it's just a picture. But if you want to look something up, that's a really good way of doing it. Um, if I wanted to have the troll craft, for example, there's a lot of typing in there. But I don't need to type it. I just need to look it up. Or you can create a PDF, um, like an excerpt from PDF, and put it on here. Again, as quick reference. Let's see how long this takes to load. That's a bit there. I, think, I hope. <laughs> I think it's a screen recorder that slows everything down as well. So you can then see, all right, that's just this section from the rulebook. And of course, um, this is for my own use. I would not distribute this to anybody, of course. Uh, but their use hopefully covers this. Right, so that's that pretty much done. The last thing I've put on here as well, uh, it's a bit small on the side, but you've got the, the beautiful Vason soundtrack that uh, was part of the Kickstarter. And I can then use that in session here. Not sure whether you can hear that, probably not. 
because I can't hear it. Bit hit and miss, but when that works, basically, you can create, you can use the soundtrack in uh, that fits the game. That's a great thing. Right. Um, final thing I wanted to just briefly show you. I coded the um, coded well, copied and pasted the the crit tables into here as well. So if you actually look at these tables here, they, I created all all the entries as items, and then there's an easy way to just right click on it and say from this folder make a rollable table. That's what I did here. Um, I put the original die numbers on there, so 11 is confused and so on, D66, but it's actually rolled as a D36. Um, that works quite well. So I just made a macro and copied it across to all my, my players. At the bottom right at the bottom left here, I've got the mental crit, which is a skull with a with a sort of stunning around it, and then the bones for physical crit. What I just would have to direct my players to do is click on one of those, then go to the chat, and then you see, all right, Draws a result, done, rolled a 7 in D36 money, but in real money it would have been a 21. And if you want to look at this one, you just click on it, you can get the detail. So see the true self, it's a mental thing, uh, as a defect, compulsive liar, and the time limit, like there was a time limit on this one. 